Today I want to walk through another set of homestead records. Last time I did this, I walked through my grandmother and grandfather's homestead records in Holt County in about 1910. Now I'm going to go back about 25 years to my grandmother's mother's homestead. And while viewing Great Grandma's homestead, I made a startling discovery completely by accident, and I'm going to show you that as well. They left from Mont with children in tow. Riding the rails to where wild grass... In 1886, Great Grandma and her sister came down from Vermont with their children. And two other sisters and their husbands were already here in Venus, Nebraska. Let me show you a little map that I found on the Historical Society website. So here's Venus, right here, and here's Mars. They're about six or seven miles apart. My grandma's family was in Venus, and my grandpa's family, they were in Mars. So... Here we are over at Fold 3, and I am going to look up Grandma. Her name was Cynthia Jane Parks. I think she's under just Jane C. here. She went by her middle name. And under Hubbard, that's her married name, she married Edmund Hubbard. Oh, let's put Nebraska. By the time she moved to Nebraska, her husband had passed away. So she came down here with her sister, and two of her other sisters were already here. These are called land case entry files. Let me open up the front page. And I'm not sure which of these are all available on fold3.com, but the land case entry files are the files that seem to have lots and lots of things that help you construct family stories. So they're the things that you really want to dig into. And they have a lot of bad handwriting, and sometimes they're dim and really hard to read, and you've got to squint, but they're worth it. So here's the front page. You start to get used to these after you've seen these a little bit. And here on Fold 3, down here at the bottom, you can see these arrows. You can page through them with the arrows, and then you can use these plus and minus signs up here to make the pages larger, smaller to zoom in and zoom out. Here we have Jane C. Hubbard, September 9, 1893. This is when she's filing her final claim to say, okay, I've lived here for the amount of time that I'm supposed to, and I want this land to be officially mine now. Right here, West 2, Southwest 4, Southeast 4. This is the coordinates that tell you exactly where her land is. Now, I've been talking with a new genealogy acquaintance, and she sent me a little cheat sheet she made for herself. Let me just pull it up here real quick so you can see it. Everything was divided into sections. They would have a range line, they would have a meridian, a baseline, they'd have a township line, and then each of these townships would be divided up and they'd have sections. And then eventually you could find your 160 acres or your 640 acres or whatever based on all these little sections here. And so the southwest of the southeast to the northwest, that's all secret code for where exactly in this grid is my homestead. The uh, Bureau of Land Management website has a lot more information. The orchestrator of these moves to Nebraska, if I understand correctly, was Sylvanus Whitmore. Sylvanus was great-grandma's sister's husband, and he was also great-grandma's husband's cousin. So he had family influence in a couple of different ways. Let's go back to our homestead records. Paperwork, government forms. All right, lots and lots of handwriting. And this is why I think they've got to keep teaching kids cursive handwriting in schools, because otherwise, how are they going to understand these old homestead documents? I mean, let's keep our priorities straight here. We can zoom in on this a little bit by using this plus sign and then drag down to look at it a little more closely. She, she's married to Edmund Hubbard. She married him in 1863. It says that he enlisted in the United States Army in July of 1861, War of the Rebellion, and served until he was discharged honorably during the month of June 1863. It says that his service was in Company G-122 New York Volunteer Infantry. That said Army service was the cause of his death. Interesting. We'll make a note of that to look at that more later. That is definitely something that you would want to write down if you're researching your family and want more family stories. But why is she mentioning this in Homestead Papers? Well, why is she bringing up her husband's veteran status here? Well, she mentions it because she wants to file a Section 2307. Well, I went out and looked up t Section 2307 online, and apparently this was something that veterans can file. Let's say normally it takes five years 
to prove your homestead claim. You've got to live on the homestead for five full years before you can file and it becomes your property. If you are a veteran under this section 2307, it might be possible to take some years off depending on how many years of service you had. So that's what she's attempting to file here. Does she get it? I'm not sure, but, but that's why she's mentioning this here. Neighbors are witnesses, stories entwine. Through humble work, their lives would... Here's the newspaper notice. I love these. I don't know about if this was true for every state, but in Nebraska, before you filed your final claim, you had to post a notice of your intent to file that claim, and you had to do it in the nearest paper for six consecutive issues. Here is where she posted it, and it mentions that her witnesses are Charles Anson, S.L. Whitmore, George Murat, and Joseph Murat. The witness forms are pretty important because often the witnesses are neighbors and occasionally they're also relatives. I don't know much about George and Joseph. Charles Anson, I'm trying to place him. I'm having a little trouble, but I've heard the name. So I went over to my cousin's family website and looked him up and sure enough, he's number nine right here. So that's Charles Anson right there. Then we get to the testimony of the witnesses. I really like to spend time carefully reading through the testimony of witnesses. Each witness will say slightly different things. It's like reading through newspaper articles where different articles will report the exact same event, but they'll say it differently. So this is George Murat. It says that he's 43 years old. Let's make this just a little bit bigger. It says that the property is for grazing and farming. She's a widow. She has not been absent five crops this year. Frame house, 12 by 14. Sod barn, 15 acres uh, breaking. So I think that means that she has gotten out there with a plow and broken up the land for 15 acres. She's got a corn crib shed and he thinks the value is probably about $225. Next is a witness statement from Sylvanus Whitmore. So Sylvanus mentions she has a frame house, a stable, a well, and a hog pen. And then we have great grandma's own statement. She's 59 years old. She came from Vermont, April 19, frame house. She doesn't mention that it's 12 by 14. She just says it's small. She has a barn. She has a well. She has a hog pen, sheds, a few trees, 15 acres. And you can just start to picture this place. And when they first move on the premises, a lot of times back then they would make a sod house and then they would live in the sod house while they're building the frame house. And I don't know if that's what they did here or not, or maybe they stayed with a sister until they built their house. They could have done that. At any rate, you can start to picture it and you can figure out how big 12 by 14 is. I am in a room right now that's probably 10 by 10, so 12 by 14 is not that much bigger than the room I am in right now. And then you can start thinking about a sod barn and a hog pen and, you know, where was the well? There was probably maybe a little pump house around the well. Grandma and the boys helping out with the chores. Great grandma, that may be going out to feed the hogs. How did they plow the fields? It mentioned here somewhere that they were growing corn and oats. And that's how you start figuring out the story. They had the long dresses. You start picturing it all in your head. Close your eyes and see them now. A house, a barn, a field and a plow. Will this More paperwork. And I have just paged past the end of Grandma's homestead record accidentally. This is what I did in real life. And I was going to close it, but I saw a name. Charles E. Scholes. And I went, <laughs> wait a minute. So Charles E. Scholes is the name of my grandmother's first husband. All grandma ever told my dad was, we went our separate ways. So I don't know what to make of it all, but we always wondered how they met. And so let's just page through Charles Homestead papers. This is interesting. And this is where I was saying that the form seems to have changed a little bit over time. This seems to be a summary page. He, he started in 1884 and filed his final proof in 1889. Looks like he had 35 acres broken. And if we continue on here, you see a lot of your standard paperwork. It says he's a citizen, he's over 21. He moved in on March 29, 1884. 
And as we go through here, it's going to say that he's single, he's 27 years old. Here's his notice of publication that he had to put in the paper. Here's his testimony. This looks quite a bit different. Let's make it a little bit bigger. He says that before he was here, he was in Iowa farming. And it asks the typical questions about, have you lived here, and so on and so forth. But it the questions are formatted differently, and there's more of them. When did you first make actual settlement? He started out, and he broke a fire line. He moved in in October of 1884. He hasn't been absent, except occasionally he went away to Madison to work. It says that in April 1884, he rebuilt. This is his second house, and it's entirely possible that first house may have been a sod house. And his house is 12 by 14. It's a frame house. He's got a stable. He's got a well. They ask him, what implements do, do you own and use on this claim? So he says he's got a wagon. He's got two plows. He's got a drag, a harrow, a corn plow, half interest in a check rover, third interest in a harvester. Can't quite read the rest of that. And then it asks what article of furniture he has. He's got one stove, one table, one bedstead with bedding, and one trunk. That is his furniture. In a room, just a little bit bigger than this room. Here's his first witness statement. Notice the name, Charles Anson. Same guy that was witness for great-grandma. Charles is 25 years old. One of the qu questions on this witness statement that I haven't seen on witness statements in later years is, give the names and residences of two or more persons living nearer to the claimant of this tract than yourself. If none are nearer than you, give the names of two or more next nearest and state the land on which they reside. He says that none are nearer. He's the closest neighbor to Charles, but the next nearer is somebody named E. I can't read it, Brighton maybe, and the other nearest neighbor is Miss Jane Hubbard. That's great-grandma. So from this, I think we can assume that the nearest neighbors to Charles Scholes are Charles Anson and this E. Brighton person and great-grandma. So while we still have no idea how my grandmother and Charles Scholes met, we certainly know how they had the opportunity to meet. They were neighbors. And I found all this out by accident, by accidentally paging one page past where I was looking on Fold3.com when I was looking through Great Grandma's homestead papers. You can see how if you just snoop through these papers and you look at the little details here, you can start picking up on, oh, this and this and this, and then picture some things in your head. And, and the story starts to come together. If you want to see the story of Grandma's Homestead, I'll put a link in the video description, and depending on where you're watching from, there may also be a link in the corner of your screen. I'll see you again soon. Neighbors are witnesses, stories entwined. Through humble work their lives would find. A Hopkins, some trees, a stable and frame. The land as their anchor, the mark of their name. Close your eyes and see them now. A house, a barn, a field and a plow. Will this new place be all that you need? With ground to grow and the space to breathe. Life laid down in measured lines. In cursive strokes through hard-won signs Each form and her steep was a legacy bound In whispers from this sacred brow From Venus to Mars just miles apart They left their words and they left their hearts Close your eyes and see it clear This homestead awaits a gift held dear